We've seen these very, very rapid reward cycles that ah. are delivered to us um, through many, many different sources, like you just described some of them, video games. Ah, uh, yes, a lot of rewards there. Texting, right? Very quick feedbacks, you mm. know, that, that could just give you like just a little snippet of information. Just a little attention. Just a little attention here, An a emoji. little bit of reward. Exactly. Just, just a, a little single touch. heart, please. <laughs> and, and so we're, we have this um, shift from the singular very sustained attention that we know we need to do sometimes, whether mm. it's a conversation that we're having with someone important to us or work that we're engaging in or focusing on the road during you know bad weather conditions and this trend towards fragmented attention um, that is driving, you know, it, you know, in a cycle for us to do it more and more and more because it's how we have learned to interact in the world to get these rewards very, very rapidly. So well, when we left for the break, I was asking about the morality, the ethics, the code of conduct of a company like, say, Facebook, which in my mind is absolutely not thinking about the ramifications of the optimizations they're doing. In fact, I know they're not. They're singularly focused on increasing the amount of engagement. So they're gamifying the feed. They're gamifying what's happening in all your friends' lives. You don't pick the order of your newsfeed. They have an algorithm set by humans that is designed to release dopamine or to create outrage to get you and to basically react. In a way, they're programming to the primal brain, aren't they? I mean, I think we see this across <clears throat> most of tech. Um, and personally, I think this this is a pivot point. I feel like right now, and that's one of the reasons why I wrote the book, it's, um, it's critical that we start developing tech or even leveraging and, and reshaping existing technology to serve what makes us most human, mm. to really uh, play to our strengths and not our weaknesses mm. and um, elevate us in many ways. And there is great potential for that to happen. I just feel like we have not focused on that enough. And it's only going to get more complicated, right, mm. with virtual reality and augmented reality, where wearable physiological devices become more in intrusive and, you know, pervasive throughout our lives, um, AI is only going to make this more complicated. So this seems like a good time to wrap our heads around what is going on, what's positive for us, what takes us away from human-human interaction and, and quality, and to learn how companies can make money, Let me right? Ask you a, that um, you could satisfy the bottom line and yeah. still do positive things. Let me ask you a, a perhaps a naive or stupid question, <clears throat> which is, why is the top-down, higher-level, non-distracted way of life better, more virtuous or healthier, whatever term you prefer to use, than the absolutely task-switching, millennial, I am absolutely have no problem having dinner with my family, not making eye contact with people, and pounding out SMS, Instagram, and snaps at the same time right. with my friends. Because you'll see six or seven of these millennials, and they're together in a <laughs> circle. Right. At Coachella, there's somebody playing on stage, and instead of watching, you know, Lord on stage, I was watching six teenage girls Snapchatting in a circle without looking at each other, but they were kind of talking to each other. It was a very bizarre scene. Right. Why is one better than the other? I'm re really hesitant to put value judgment and, and to say better or worse. It just depends what's important to a person. Mm. And if real deep connection is important and mm. quality of performance and safety and health is important, then we know that there's a way to engage that could maximize that. Mm. It certainly doesn't mean that multitasking is bad or evil. Tech, you know, I'm, I love technology. I have every device out there. I mean, right. I'm certainly not a Luddite. I just think that we can use um, our understanding about how our brains work mm. in a high-level way and where they have limitations just to make more informed decisions about how we use our technology. Oh, wait a second. You're saying that you're not willing to take a stand on which is better, except you said one will make you healthier, Increase performance <laughs> and reduce anxiety and mental <laughs> anguish. But what's not better than the other? That's it. Everyone has to make their own decisions. Gotcha. You're being magnanimous. But in truth, you do feel that the world would be a better place if people were less reactionary and more considered. And I don't think that's some outrageous statement. I think so. I, I think, you know, I, I, I do like to couch it in the terms that it doesn't mean that you can't ever multitask or, right. or engage in this way. You just have to make a decision about when you want to. 
It's right? a pendulum. It's it's you know it's it's about making decisions, just like all interactions with the environment, the foods you eat, the amount of sun exposure you have. Mm. It's all you know a level of what you want to tolerate, and then deciding when you're going to do it. But the the real message that I think is important is the control is mm. to take control of those decisions. Ah. Do not be led by the enticing candy around us. Make a decision. Everybody knows I love Audible. I've been talking about Audible for years on social media, on this podcast. I love it. I have hundreds of uh, audio books in my Audible collection. And you can access them from anywhere. You know that, iPhone, iPad, Android, Windows. And this is really important. I use it on my Android phone and on my iPhone and on my iPad and on my desktop computer. It's just super easy. I've given you a ton of recommendations. I'm going to give you one that is not a business one, but that's important for business people to read, I believe. It's called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Maria Konodo. Konodo? I don't know exactly how to pronounce her name. This book is amazing. And when you listen to it, you'll initially be like, wow, this is a real first world problem. How do you sort through all the stuff you have in your closets? And then she starts doing her method, which is, in a nutshell, you have to do it all at once, and you do it by category, and you either keep something and then you figure out where it lives or you discard it. The life-changing magic of tidying up. I did my closet at home using this method. And what you do is you hold each item and you say, does this give me joy? Do I want to keep it or not? If it gives you joy and you're going to keep it, you keep it. If not, you get rid of it. You donate it. So I donated literally two-thirds of my old clothes. It felt great to give them to Goodwill. And then now I go in my closet and I have pure joy and bliss in my closet. I also got rid of all my old undies and socks, replaced them with Tommy John stuff, and it all fits perfectly to do a crossover uh, ad read. But this book is a bestseller, and my wife read it like a year ago. I read it now, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. I am telling you, you are going to love it. And it's not a super long read, or listen, I should say. It's only a couple of hours, maybe six hours or something. You can get through it in a couple of like days of commuting. But when you do her method, and then she's got all these like little idiosyncratic things, like she only puts things into drawers vertically. So when we fold my black t-shirts like I'm wearing right now, all of them are folded vertically so you can easily get to them. And she goes through, should you keep boxes? Should you keep instruction manuals? She goes through, goes through every aspect of tidying up. This woman has spent decades being an organizer and she came up with her own method. And I have to tell you, the method is amazing. And when you tidy up, it makes your life so much lighter and you feel so much freer because you've gotten rid of all your old stuff. That, you know what happens? You wind up letting other things into your life. And the people who do this wind up having like better marriages and relationships and business opportunities. I, I actually kind of believe that when you get rid of all this old junk that's, you know, taking up all this emotional energy that it frees you up. And when I open my closet, I just feel a sense of freedom. I'm like every shirt in here I love, every pair of underwear I love, every pair of socks I love, every jacket. I could just literally pick anything, wear it and feel great. So go get this book. The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by going to audible.com slash twist, audible.com slash twist. Get your 30-day free trial membership. And the first book is on me. Uh, other books I like, The Man Who Knew Infinity, The Hobbit, Smarter, Faster, Better, Deciding to Play Great Poker by my friend Annie Duke, Sapiens was really good, Creativity, Inc. We had Ed Catmull on the program. So many, so many great uh, publications, uh, books you can get on audible.com slash twist, audible.com slash twist. Let's get back to this amazing program. 